What do you see going forward? Like I'm watching stuff that's going on right now and I think there's a lot of parents that have had enough. More than enough. And and I wish that grandparents, I'm fighting this as a grandparent. My grand, my, my parents are, yeah, my parents are in this too. They, they lost their granddaughter. Yeah. And if you're a grandparent out there, you need to be involved. I'm going to tell you right now that if you're a grandparent, you probably have enough resources. You probably have enough influence. You should be hounding your legislators. If they are not going to be responding to the family destruction that this state is causing, um, you need to be working against them and getting them out. But anyway, going, do you see any changes that are taking place right now? That I mean, I, I look, and like in the Old Testament, when Elijah said to his servant to say, is there a cloud on the horizon? And the servant came back and said, I see the cloud the size of a man's fist. And Elijah said, you go tell Ahab the, the rains are coming. And I, stuff think like they, that. I think they know that we're, we're, we're tired of it. We're tired yeah. of it. I mean, our kids are growing up without one parent for no reason at all. Yeah. And they need both their parents. Yeah. yeah. I don't care what a judge says or what an attorney says. Those are opinions. Their opinions. A child identity has to have both the mother and father yes. involved. They have to see the interaction. They've got to mm -hmm. know, I'm 50% my father, I'm 50% my mother. And when that is being taken away, a child is left partially identity less, without an identity. Mm -hmm. So now what do you see taking place here? You see a lot of these people that are saying, I'm trans. I'm like, and... I think they're confused. Right. And, and this is what, I, what I'm saying. What, you know, I was at CPAC earlier this year, or, yeah, earlier this year, and I said, you know, the child's identities are not being formed. So if the identity is not being formed, what are they doing? They're trying to get a new identity, in a sense, or some type of identity, and they're very open to being brainwashed. Do you think that I'm exaggerating with that? Not or? at all. I don't. I yeah. don't. Because they don't know. I mean, they don't. <laughs> yeah. So I got to meet your your one daughter tonight. Yes, you did. You and got to meet Lexi. Yeah, she was. A, it was a very. She was a very pleasant. Thank um, you very much. Yeah, I mean, I really. I wish I would have been able to talk with her more. We're there with with a couple of other people too, but uh, she was a, a wonderful. Thank you. Uh, uh, she's your oldest daughter. Yes, yeah, she's my oldest. She just turned twenty-one. Wow. Actually. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Hope to How meet her again flies. sometime. Yes, yeah. Exactly. Yes. She. She. She listens to me when I talk. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, I'm glad you were able to be with her and everything, and that they got to meet her. But, you know, you still have your other daughter out there. Yes. And um, I don't know that she's going to watch something like this. I mean, if you got to give her a message, or what I've also said, too, because right now you're advocating on behalf of other people. Yes. There's got to be people that know both you and her. Yes. That should be saying to your other daughter, look, you know, it's hard to understand this but your understanding is incorrect. I think that she would be, if she had her mother in her life, she would be stronger. I mean, she would, her studies would be more, her, I mean, she, she, I don't know how to say it. Um, it would help her a lot more. It would take that off her mind that, well, about my mother, that my mother's here, she supports me. We have a great relationship, and that would be one thing that she wouldn't have to worry about, and she could focus more on her school, right? her college, and she could be even better than what she is, you know. Right. No, no, I, I, hear what, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> I mean, she, her mother, her grandparents, mm -hmm. the whole other side. Is there, I mean, what would you tell your ex-husband? I mean, obviously, this attorney... Amanda, what's her name? Amanda Harris. There Amanda. was two others. There, I'm going to go ahead and name them. That okay. was J.D. Smith and um, Brent Huckabee. Okay, and they all contributed to the same problem? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, let, me, let me go ahead and expose the other counsel, too. Uh, Cho Sherwood and um, Bridget O'Brien. Okay, you'll have to send me the name so I that will. I can make sure. So you had five attorneys in here that they've led to so many problems. Um, and you're... Your ex-husband, all he knows is that he's been served with something. Right. And he's led to believe yeah. that you did it. Yeah, that I was trying to take the girls away from him. Right. I mean, would you have a message either for him or for your daughter and maybe even the attorneys that have done this dastardly deed? What happens if it happens to your family? Uh, no. Um 
that I wish that my ex-husband would see past what happened and, and realize that's not what happened at all. Why would I try to take the girls away from him? Why would I do that? Right. And that he got played. I mean, really, he did. Yeah. They, they used him. They used all of us at, at the expense of our daughters. Yeah, yeah. And there's been so many people like, like you, Jesse. Um, either we have gone through it to some degree or we know people that have. And it's, and it's rampant throughout our state. And our legislators turn a blind eye to it. They turn a deaf ear to it. They act as if we are invisible. Right. And you know what you said was very interesting, I thought. Your daughter right now, if she did not have to struggle with some of these other things or wonder right. about them, she could be so much better. Dr. Brooks McKenzie has talked about that. Because some of these people say, well, look at me. I went through this and, and I turned out okay. And Dr. McKenzie says, you may have turned out okay. We're not saying every single person is going to turn out right. bad or anything like that. But had the family been intact, contact with both parents, instead of being here, you would even be even higher. Right. And if you look at our prisons, I remember when I taught up in uh, Walla Walla, they were filled with people from uh, broken families with only one parent involved in many instances. Every single social malady that we have, whether it's unwed pregnancies, abortions, high school dropouts, uh, drinking, um, you name it, gang activity, uh, a lot of times the commonality is a broken family mm -hmm. or a never formed family. And uh, if you're a legislator in the state, um, you have a responsibility. And we're actually getting a little bit tired of telling you this and you ignoring us. Governor uh, has the same responsibility. Judges, you have a responsibility uh, that you have a fundamental right as a parent to have a relationship with your child. Yes. And when your judges come in and take that away, there's something wrong. And attorneys, attorneys that charge ungodly amounts of money and they destroy families. They don't make things better. So, Jesse, um, I want to thank you for everything that you've done. Mm -hmm. Like, again, I, I know I've been the beneficiary of some things that you've sent me, but is there any final message or anybody else you want to mention? you know, maybe just acknowledge here at the same time? Um, well, of course, Brandon. I yes. wouldn't know anybody if it wasn't for Brandon. So he doesn't just advocate for fathers. He does advocate for mothers too. And um, George Saldana, mm -hmm. I talk to him every night. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm his partner in crime, I guess. I don't want to say crime. Yeah, I, I guess. Know. But his, uh, his, you know, but there's a... There's so many. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many of us. I mean, Taryn Champagne, um, Breston Wright. I can't think of anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. a lot of them. Yeah, there are a lot of them. Well, I wanted to say thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you. Again, it was wonderful to meet your daughter. And your husband, where is he right now? He's at home sleeping, probably. Gotcha. <laughs> it's probably been, has quite an effect on your marriage at times, I don't know, as the, well. The, it's been... Yeah, it, and it does. It does affect your marriage. I mean, because they didn't ask for this. Right. We're stuck in this, but we stuck together and we worked through it and it made us stronger. Yeah, well, that's good. Because I know, I remember that one scene from the Divorce Corp where an attorney goes by and sees the wedding, and in the back of his mind, the divorce attorney is saying, that's inventory. Exactly, and something, you bringing that up make, reminds me that they did try to separate us. They said that, they gave me a step-up program, step-up program, like I could go have dinner with her once a week and then it was to the mall for four times, for four, for four hours on Saturday, which was during COVID, no doubt, and then I could step up to one overnight visit twice a month, but my husband had to leave the house. He couldn't be there, the house that he pays for. Wow, that's incredible. It's incredible. Well, Jesse, thank you for helping to expose not just the family court injustice, but the anti-family attorney injustice as well. Yes. I wish you all the best. Uh, thank you so much once again for all that you do. And um, yes, that's it. Thank you. Thank Thanks you for so having much, me. Jesse. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs>